Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. Hello, welcome back to Right on Track. I am very excited because joining me today is a very special guest, Maddie Hayes. Hey, Maddie. Hey. How are you? I am great. How about you? I'm fantastic. I'm so excited you're on today because we're doing a very fun episode where you're going to be asking me a bunch of questions about songwriting and so much more. And I cannot wait to get into this. But before we do, can you share with everyone a little bit about why you love songwriting or music or whatever you like to share? Of course. So unlike a lot of the previous guests you've had, I don't actually have any music out in the world yet, but I started songwriting back in May of 2020, and I got into it because of yours truly. You were actually my inspiration. I never thought that, you know, I had the ability to songwrite, but after encouragement from you, I started doing it for myself, and it has been just a life changer. I don't even know how to express. I've gotten out some pretty intense things through my songwriting, and I hope that one day I can get to a level that's even a 16th as good as you. (laughs) But I love music. I listen to mainly country myself, but I do listen to a variety of pop and some 80s. My biggest inspirations, of course, are you, Taylor Swift, Kelsey Ballerini, and Lady A. Fantastic. Well, you and I are the same in the fact that we both love Taylor and Kelsey. And thank you so much for sharing about how you got into songwriting. It's been awesome to see you go from not really knowing if you could do it to taking that you know, chance and starting to do it because you're definitely, definitely growing. So just keep at it. Well, thank you. Of course. So I think you have some questions for me. So I'm super excited to answer these. So do you want to kick it off with your first one? All right. I'll start with something easy. So what is the meaning behind your podcast title, Right on Track? It actually has three meanings, which is kind of cool, and everyone knows I love my puns. So the direct meaning of right on track, the way that we all know it, R-I-G-H-T, is basically saying, you know, keep your direction and keep moving forward. And I always refer to songwriting as a journey, and in order to continue down that journey, you have to stay right on track. So that is the main meaning behind the title. The other meaning behind it is the way I decided to spell right, and I spelled it W-R-I-T-E, because this is a songwriting podcast, so that's a pun there. And the third one, which isn't as noticeable, but if you're a musician, you'll definitely notice it, it's the way I use track. And if you think about recording and music, you're recording tracks. The songs are essentially called tracks, and there's different tracks when you're recording, vocal tracks, instrumental tracks, all of those things. So all of that rolled into one title is right on track. Wow, I love it. That's so cool. Thank you. I put a lot of thought into it, and I am proud of it, so (laughs) there you go. (laughs) Well, it's very witty. I love it. (laughs) What is the importance of an opening line in a song, and how do you construct a solid opening line? This is a great question because opening lines are very, very important. It's almost like the first impression to the whole song because that's your first chance to introduce the story and lyrical concept to a listener. And it's very important to craft it in such a way where it not only serves the song in the way that it ties back to your chorus message, but also is phrased in a way that really captures someone's attention 
And I've always been taught in all the retreats and songwriting classes that I've done that the first line should always be connected to your message. So in other words, if you take a first line of a song, you should be able to remove the rest of the verse and if there's a pre-chorus and stick it right before the chorus and it should make sense. And so I spend a lot of time with my first lines because I want them to pull my listeners into my song, but I also want them to be very not only fresh but unique because I'm always trying to make my lyrics unique and tell a story and so crafting a strong first line is probably one of the most important parts of the whole process. Well that's beautiful and I've always been really pulled to your first lines that usually is the first thing that sticks out to me. You have some of the best opening lines. Wow, thank you. Well, that means I'm doing my job. And it's funny you mentioned the chorus because that leads me to my next question. How is the best way to structure a chorus? This is another great question. I honestly feel like out of all of the song sections, the choruses are the part of the song that I definitely put a lot of time into and that I struggle a little bit with at times because... You want to structure it in a way that the melody is recognizable and singable and memorable because when a listener walks away from a song, they should have that chorus melody in their head. Even if they forget the lyrics, they should be humming that melody or singing that melody. So it's very important to make the melody strong. And also the lyric needs to really drive home the message. And I think that's the area where I can kind of struggle a bit because I'm very story driven with all of my lyrics. And so I love to put in those images and metaphors and really tell a story. So when I get to the chorus, sometimes I get halted and I'm like, wait, I need to say this in a very simple conversational way. And that's not really my strong suit as a writer. I love doing the storytelling and the imagery. And so I really have to think about that. And also what's big for choruses, which isn't seen in every song, but a lot, is that that's where the height of the melody should be. Oftentimes, the highest pitch of the song is in the chorus. And a lot of people refer to this as making sure the chorus lifts melodically. And so there's a lot that goes into it, you know, like making sure the message is clear and strong, making sure the melody is memorable and lifts. So there's a lot that goes into structuring that chorus. And when you do it right, it can literally do wonders for a song because it definitely takes it to the next level. Wow. Well, you put that so just beautifully and simply at the same time. I love that. I myself really struggle with choruses as well because I usually have an idea for something, but then I have a hard time elaborating on that. And I get pretty flowery with the way I want to word a lot of things. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And one of the tips that I've been taught that helps a lot is just saying the point of this song is dot, dot, dot. And you have to fill in the blank. And usually what comes out is something so simple and conversational. Like think about will I ever. The chorus is literally saying, will I ever know how it feels to fall in love? That's not flowery. There's no metaphors in that. It's very straightforward. And when you're trying to think of a chorus message and what you want to say, just literally ask yourself, what am I trying to say? What is the point of the song? And the first thing that comes out is usually what you're trying to say because you're not really thinking about it too much or trying to fit it to a lyrical structure. So in this case, simple would be better. Right, exactly. Yeah, you want your choruses to be clear and say a message. So definitely keep the chorus message simple. Okay, fantastic. Now this, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and ask a little bit more of a personal question, just so we kind of get a feel for, you know, you as a person and as an artist. I know that Taylor Swift, Kelsey Ballerini, and Julia Michaels are all huge inspirations, but who else has been a huge influence as a songwriter or just in your writing process? This is a great question and this is something I often reflect on because we're all individual songwriters and artists but we definitely find ourselves doing things or you know being influenced by the artists that we love 
And one other artist that's really coming to mind, aside from Taylor, Julia, and Kelsey, is Maren Morris. And I love her because she is truly pushing genre boundaries, much like the way Taylor does. And she's gotten a lot of criticism in a way when she won Country Music Awards because people consider her music to be pop. And they're like, why is she winning a Country Music Award? And it's because the genre is changing and people need to recognize that. And Marin is definitely a country artist at heart. Her writing style is very country, but just because her songs can come out sounding more pop doesn't mean she's not. And so I really look up to her and just the way she carries herself too. She's very professional. She's very kind and supportive of other artists. She stands up for what she believes in. And so all of that is just, it's something that I want to be. I want to be an inspiration for others, but I also want to do what's right for me and speak up and do the right thing. And that's definitely something that Marin does a lot. So Marin Morris is another one that truly inspires me. Wow. That's amazing. I love her music as well. And just like you said, how she pushes the boundaries. I love that. Those are some of my favorite artists, ones that can blend the two genres together. That's just wow. I love her song, The Bones. That's probably my favorite of hers. So good. I love it too. She's fantastic all across the board. Amazing. She is. And she's just, she's such a genuinely nice person as well, which is a huge plus. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so this one's kind of a, a deep question, but I've heard you say before in interviews that you're not usually an open person. So how are you able to be so raw and vulnerable in your songwriting? That's a great question because really it doesn't make sense, to be honest. Like, if I'm not an open person, how am I so open in my music? And I honestly think it's because... The way that I'm presenting my stories and sharing my feelings isn't in a direct way, if that makes sense. It's not like I'm walking up to a stranger on the street and saying, hey, this happened to me today and this is how I feel about it. Like, I would be terrified to do that. I would never do something like that. But I think, and this is something I said before too, I think it's the music side of songwriting that allows me to be so vulnerable because the lyrics alone, I would never just hand them to somebody too on the street and be like, hey, read this. It's literally like a diary entry. But when you bring music into it, You can do so many unique things to the story and you can twist the story at times so it's not 100% authentic but it's still you but you're adding a flavor of you know fiction in a way not to the feeling or experience necessarily but in the way it's presented and it allows me to separate myself from my own experience and present it in a way that others can relate to because if I wrote a song that was so me that nobody could relate to there will be no point releasing that so there's a balance between being authentic and true to my experience and my feelings while also presenting it into a way that's universal I think all that together just allows me to be so vulnerable because songwriting is an art And it's no different than looking at a painting or sculpture. Sure, there might be meaning behind that, why the artist created it. And music is the same way. There is a person behind it, but it's presented in such a way that the rest of the world can experience it as well. Well, I love that. I've always thought of myself personally as an open book, but ever since I started songwriting, Things I've really realized that I'm not good when it comes to conveying deep emotions. So songwriting has definitely helped me with that. And your music in particular, I'm able to connect with it and really reach down and identify with these emotions and be like, okay. So I know there's people out there that think and feel the same way that I do. Yeah, and it's great to hear that. And I think also songwriting is my tool or my way of doing this like I can't just open up to somebody verbally but I can put it in a song and so it's very therapeutic for me and it's honestly something I truly rely on because I have no other way of expressing myself the way that I do and so I think that's another reason why I'm able to be vulnerable in these songs is because I have to and I just am making that courageous choice to put it out into the world for others. 
Well, we greatly appreciate it (laughs) from a listener's point of view. Great. I'm so glad. And not only are you an amazing songwriter, but you also are a mind-blowing piano player and guitar. Okay, piano, yes. Guitar, not so much. I'll give that shout out to Luke, my guitarist, who is the best in the world. But Yes, he's great. He's great. He is. So we love you, Luke, if you're listening. <laughs> yes, shout out to Luke, especially with Fine Love. Oh, my gosh. Good. So I am just curious if you ever start with a melody first before you write lyrics. I have never done this, and I think the reason is because I'm so lyrically driven in my music, and I have to know the story, I have to know the concept, I have to know what I want to say before I really think about the music, because the music needs to emphasize that story, and the way you craft the melody and the chord structure needs to support the lyrics. And the other way around. And there are some songwriters that are definitely more melodic in the way that they do their writing. But for me, I definitely focus on the lyrics more. And the lyrics are the central part of the majority of my song. So I haven't started with the melody first. I've always started with lyrics. That's awesome. I've been struggling myself because I'll have words to say. But then I hear a song and I'm like, okay, but this won't fit into a melody. And I've heard of people doing kind of both at the same time. And I was just, I don't know how how they do that. I find that just so amazing. (laughs) Yeah, to be honest, that's kind of how I do it a lot of the time. It's not like, I very rarely will write an entire lyrical draft and then do melody. It's, It's more knowing you know, the story and have some lyrical ideas and start playing around with the melody. Because you're right, if you have a full draft of lyrics, it's sometimes really hard to force it into a melody and you don't want to do that. So you have to make them fit together. And so there are songs where I truly write both simultaneously. And there are others where I start with a lyrical draft or idea and then focus on the melody. I never start with having a full melody or you know fragments of a melody and fit lyrics to it I always start with some lyrical idea and that either happens you know together with the melody or bits and pieces as I go so do you prefer writing on your own or co-writing this is a hard question because I love both but lately I've been realizing how important co-writing is and ever since I started to do co-writing I've grown as a songwriter and I can write more efficiently on my own. So I definitely, if I would have to pick between them, I would definitely pick co-writing. It's just so fun. Not only the writing part of it, but just getting to know other songwriters, their styles, their personalities, and seeing a song come to life that more than one writer contributed to is just the coolest thing because you all write about something that means something to you in some way because all the songwriters are writing the song because it means something or else they wouldn't be writing it if it didn't connect to them. But instead of it being a single songwriter's point of view or perspective, you're blending more than one together. And just look at Ellie Will Wait For Me. That song is me and Madison Young. And, you know, there are details in that song that are me and there are details in that song that are her. But the message is both of us. And so I could do that every single day if I could. And that's why I really want to break into the industry as a songwriter. So I can't do that every day. I love that. And I have noticed it does change the flavor a bit with especially LA will wait for me. It's a little more, you know, I I can see where it's two different perspectives and it makes it exciting because you don't always know where the song's going to go. So I really like that. You can't predict it. Whereas if you're used to a one artist, a particular artist style, you can kind of predict predict where they might go. But with the co-writing, it's two different people. So I love that. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's so fun. And it's so enlightening every time I do it. So I know this wasn't a question I wrote down, but if you could pick just anybody in the world to co-write with, who would it be? Joy Michaels, for sure. If I can co-write with Julia my life will be complete. 
I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. I would kill to co-write with pretty much anyone, but especially you. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> if I could co-write with you, I would just like probably die of shock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we will one day. We will. And making a manifestation right now. Manifesting, I will write with Julia Michaels one day. You heard it first on Right on Track. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> do you always plan to sing your own music or do you plan to write for other artists? So my goal is to write for other artists. That is what I'm aiming for. But that being said, I would never stop performing my own music because I love performing. I love writing and releasing my own music. I love being an artist. And so I will definitely keep that up even if I start to write for other artists, which is my goal. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear you say that because you you definitely have a very unique voice. It's very, it's a blend between kind of airy and it's sweet and it just, it kind of floats. That's the best way I can explain it. It's it's like a caress to the soul, if I had to put it into words. It's very just calming and therapeutic. Oh, thank you so much. Well, you will definitely be hearing a lot more songs by me, so. Fantastic. Which songs are you most excited about on your album? Oh, I'm excited for all of them. I'm excited for all of them for different reasons, and... This episode will be out after the album is out. So fast forward in the future, everyone listening now, go listen to Dear Diary. It is out. Um, But the songs I'm most excited for everyone to hear. This is hard because I love them all. But I would have to say Perfectly Imperfect because I love that song. And it's a very fun pop song, and it's very unique and different than all the other songs on the album. I kind of went off in a very wild direction with that one, and it was super fun. So that one, obvious, is one I talk about all the time. It's very fun. It's very, you know, in-your-face kind of poppy, and it has a lot of attitude, and so I really like that one. And the third song that I'm most excited for everyone to hear is Will I Ever Acoustic? Because I wrote that song on guitar. And so even though the original version is a pop song, I wanted to put a bonus track on the album that captured Will I Ever the way it was when I wrote it. And so I had Luke come to the studio to record guitar for it. And it sounds so different than the original version and I love it because like I said that is exactly how I wrote it and so I'm very very excited for you guys to hear Will I Ever the way that it was always meant to be heard. Well the rough drafts I've heard of all your songs are just mind-blowing but and I know that Fine Love is already released but you know came out before the album and I just I fell in love with that song and Will I Ever as well they both make me want to ball my eyes out But I also am a major fan of Obvious. I just like want to scream it at the top of my lungs and dance around and be like, yeah, like I totally get into that attitude. (laughs) I love it. Fantastic. Well, I'm very excited. I saved the best for last. What advice would you give to someone considering songwriting? So this is a piece of advice that I would give to my younger self if I could because she totally started it the wrong way and I'm in such a better place now. And the piece of advice is no matter how scary it might be, you have to be authentic. You have to or else every single song you write, if it's not tied to your life or feelings in some way, you're not going to feel anything. And I've written and recorded so many songs before Dear Diary that were 100% fiction that I didn't relate to, period. And when I listened back to those songs, I felt literally nothing. So how are my listeners supposed to feel something if I don't? And I learned the hard way 
through investing so much time and money and energy into these songs that I ended up just throwing away because they meant nothing to me. So if you're going to be a songwriter, you have to be authentic, be honest, be true. You can definitely twist the story a little bit in the song so it's not your story to the facts necessarily. But what you're writing about, you have to believe in it. It has to mean something to you or else nobody else will feel anything. So please, please just be authentic and you will do fantastic and fabulous and people will love your songs if you are authentic. So be authentic. Words to live by and you have no idea how much I needed to hear that. I struggle with getting to, you know, those places in songwriting and putting it down on paper and actually saying, okay, this is how I'm feeling. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot to get to the point of, you know, opening up about that and accepting the fact that if I'm going to be a songwriter, I have to open up, but you have to get to that place. And it took me a while to get there, but I did, and you will too. Yeah, well, our time went off a bit ago, so that's perfect timing. Um, but just for fun, before we go... Right now, off the top of your head, one more fun question. Go. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't plan for this. <laughs> uh, crap. <laughs> oh, geez. I had, like, so many, and now I'm, like, mind blanking. <laughs> if you could write for any artist, who would you write for? Oh, for? Oh, wow. Okay, let me think about this one. Um... Well, Taylor, Julia, and Kelsey are out because they write their own music for the most part. I'm trying to think of an artist who primarily has writers or that I would just really want to have songwriting credit on. Hmm. Okay, well, so many artists are coming to mind, but one that I would love to write a song for would be Carrie Underwood. Because she is truly a goddess. She's a powerhouse. And all of her songs are fantastic. And she has a range I don't have. And I just think that the way that she presents herself and the way that she performs her songs, both live and on studio recordings, is truly out of this world. So I would love to write a song for her because... Let's face it, any song she performs of mine would be a billion times better than how I would perform it. So, Carrie Underwood it is. Vocally, she definitely is just, <laughs> I mean, she'll leave you speechless. There, <laughs> there's just no way to even put that. So, I always like to wrap up my episodes with a question for the guest, you, Maddie. So my question to you is one that you asked me, and that is if you could write a song with any artist other than me, a mainstream artist, who would it be? Oh, dang. That is, that's a big one because there are so many artists I look up to and that inspire me. But if I had to bring it down to one, I'd say Taylor Swift. That girl has some serious, you know, she knows how to write lyrics. Yeah, great choice. Taylor is amazing, and she's one of my biggest inspirations. So, you know, maybe one day you'll write a song with Taylor. Oh, gosh. Oh, geez. That, like, would just be beyond a dream come true. So, Maddie, I loved having you as my guest. How did you like being on the show? I absolutely loved getting to talk with you just anytime I get to pick your brain and ask you how you do things it helps me so much in my own writing since you're my biggest inspiration and the one I model probably 99% of my stuff after so this was just huge and insightful well, Maddie, it was an absolute honor having you. I love talking to you and answering all of your questions. It was lots of fun. Listeners, thank you so much for listening to this very special episode of Right on Track. And of course, until next time, stay, stay right, right on, on track. track.